Welcome to church. It is so good that you are with us online. Welcome in person. Why don't we put our hands together for our incredible God, who is here. you're here, ready to listen to Him, and He's here ready to talk to you. Let's stand to our feet. Let's get engaged in worship. Let's let's see what God would say to us today. We are in for a great morning, everybody. Let's do this. Awesome morning.
open our hearts to you, Lord Jesus, today. God, speak to us.
going to see him do it again and again and again and again and again. It's in his nature to be good to us. It's in his nature to do miracles. It's in his nature to heal. It's in his nature to redeem. It's in his nature. It's who he is to create. How good is that? I think we're back, we're back to the right God, the one true God, the one who is act, active and able and willing and invested in your future and your destiny. I, I'd love to just to spend a couple of moments in prayer. Let's switch straight into prayer right now. And let's, let's pray to our incredibly powerful, good, mighty, loving and generous God right now. I want you to close your eyes and start praying in tongues. And, and let me read this, this incredible scripture we unpacked at Connect Group this week. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, In the same way, the Spirit even helps us in our prayers, in our weakness, because we don't even know what to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words can't even express. See, even if you're in this moment, you're like, I don't know the words to say that's going to unlock heaven's gates, that's going to unleash the power of the Almighty. It doesn't even matter because your Holy Spirit, your counselor, your friend, the one who is in you, is just sitting there going, oh, I know they don't know how to pray, but I know how to pray. It goes a bit like this, God help. He's just groaning with words, that, uh, groans that can't express. He's praying prayers that unlock the hand of God. And it says this, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. But do you know what that means? Is the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to pray, because He knows exactly what's on the heart of the Father. He knows that everything He prays is a yes for you today. He's praying for your best and it goes on to say this incredible thing. And we know that all things work to, the, to good together, work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So in this moment right now, the Holy Spirit's praying, the Son's fathering, the Son is praying, the Father as well. You're praying. Let's all get in this. And the answer of God and the answer of heaven for you is going to be a big resounding yes. Who's ready to pray? God, thank you. God, we thank you that you hear us. God, we thank you so much that in this moment right now, as we pray for our friends, as we pray for our family, as we pray for ourselves, Lord God, that you are going to do all the goodness, all the good things for us. Lord God, you are going to look after us. My God, you're going to lead us. You're going to grow us. You're going to prepare us for this life and the next. My God, you are getting us ready for the great things in store for us for 2020. My God, you are preparing us. You're building resilience and grit. You're putting strength in us. You're, you're building our faith. God, you're making us stable. You're making us strong. You're healing our sicknesses. You're providing for our needs. You're bringing together people in relationship. My God, I thank you that you're doing incredible things for us. I thank you that the answer of heaven for us today is yes. We thank you, Lord, that our friends and family will come to know you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that this place will grow in life and in friends. My God, we thank you. Build the family today. Make it great. Make it renowned. My God, make it good. Lord Jesus, bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Put your hands together for God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good, and He's so ready to act as we talk to Him, as we listen to Him. And so as we continue our, our series on hearing from God, I want us to spend 30 seconds right now in, in what may be for you, maybe an awkward place, a time where you would still your heart, you would stop your voice, and you would listen to what God might say to you. So this is going to be some dead space on the radio. It's going to be awkward for anyone listening at home who's not watching. I want you just to think for 30 seconds. I want you just to still your voice, still the, the voices in your head, you crazy people. And, uh, and just, just listen to the voice of God, the one who says, you are my child. You are loved. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. It may have felt awkward for you the first time or the 50th time, but I want you to practice that. Make it a daily habit. That you would not just talk at God, you talk with God. Send your prayers off to a distant land, hoping they'd be heard, but commune, talk, have a conversation with your God, your Father, your friend, your Savior. So good. Have a seat, everybody. Welcome to church. This is good. Pastor Don and Adrian are having are having a wonderful time on their annual leave, and they'll be back next week. And uh, they're, they're, having some, they're having a really good time. Pastor Adrian's had this, this opportunity Oh, the week after. Sorry. They'll be back the week after. I'm preaching next week. Can't wait to wrap up our, our Hearing from God series. Hasn't it been good? Oh, man. I've I'm, I'm been really enjoying. You know what? Actually, what I've been finding is I every time we have a different theme, when I go to my Bible, I find scriptures just pop out with different perspective. Like I, Because we're all in the Hearing from God phase of our year and in this series, I want to know what else the Bible says about hearing from God and how about how we hear from God. And here's a, here's a crazy, crazy picture as we come to give our gifts to God right now, as we come to give generous, generously to Him as He's given generously to us. In Matthew chapter 17, there's this, I haven't, haven't told the team this, but uh, to put this up, but Matthew chapter 17, there's this great story about how um, some of these disciples Jesus' disciples come to Jesus and say, look, what, what are we meant to do with tax? And I love how God is not just, God's response, like Jesus' response is not just like, oh, I don't want to care about, I don't really care about tax. There's, there's the church thing and there's the world's thing. There's, there's your church life and once you leave church, the, I, don't, I don't look after that. No, to Jesus, Jesus said, I, I, I've got an answer for everything. I've even got an answer for your tax. And I love that the punchline of this is you are looked after by God. And so I'm not going to read through the scripture, but the story goes that the disciples come to Jesus and Jesus says, they're, they're, oh, sorry, actually, they're like people uh, come to Jesus and they say, well, what are we going to do with the tax? Like trying to trick Jesus, trip Jesus up. Jesus says to them, you know, what you should do is, like, who's, who's on the coin? Uh, the coin is Caesar's on the coin, okay? So give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. That's a, that's a great response. But then he doesn't even just stop there of giving just advice of what you should do. Like, treat, okay, look after God with your gifts in, in the church and also look after Caesar with your tax because they're, they're both required that you would, you would do that. But he even goes so far as to say, okay, I've got a strategy for you of how you would live your life well. See, if God can get you hearing, He can get you thriving. If God can get you hearing, if He can get your ears open, if He can get you listening to what He would say and then doing it, He can get you thriving, can't He? And so He says to His disciples, like, take, take this idea, okay? You need tax. You need to pay your taxes. How are you going to do that? I want you to go and do something that you love doing. I want you to go and fish. You're going to catch a fish, and the first fish you catch, and this is great, I wish we could do this. First fish you catch, you're going to find a coin in there. I want you to pay not only your taxes, I want to pay mine as well, because I haven't done my taxes yet. I love the honesty of Jesus in that situation. He's not like, oh, I haven't done my taxes. He gives them a strategy. If he can get you listening, if he can get you hearing, he can get you thriving. And some of you, I just feel like there's some encouragement for you this morning that you're like, I don't even know how I'm going to make ends meet. I'm confused about my financial situation. If he can get you hearing, he can get you thriving. If you would listen to his voice today, he's got, he's got, a, he's got a million different ideas for you. But he's going to give you one that he's going to unlock thriving in your life this year. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I love how Jesus interacts with the practical lives of us. Not just the hard issues, but the practical issues too. That's beautiful. Why don't we close our eyes and pray right now. God, thank you. You look after us. God, I thank you that you know our needs. And you say to us, like, why 
would you worry? Who by worrying can add a single thing to their life? God knows what you need. God knows what you need before you even ask Him. I just feel like God's going to give you some strategies today that are going to change your life. Go and catch a fish. Go and pay your taxes. But listen to God. He's got great things for you this year. And God, as we give right now, Lord God, I thank you for your generosity in giving Jesus to us and everything else in our lives. May God bless these wonderful people with ideas and help help them to have ears that will hear your word and follow your leading in 2021. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed as you give, everybody. Let's give together. Bless our wonderful God. So good. Hey, this this week we had uh, an incredible time here or I'm saying we, like our church, had an incredible moment because we had a youth camp here at church. I'd love you to welcome Dylan and Monique to the stage to give us an update. Tell us all the things that went down. Thanks, Pastor Josh. Man, it was it was awesome. Um, so we did lots of different types of games that we haven't done before. Um, we did lots of stuff that had involved them with water. It's so hot, right? So, so they need to keep cool. They did a game where they had like a baseball game where they had to run and they'd have to hop into the pool and stuff like that and then run and jump into the pool again. They loved that game. Um, they also made some really cool shirts. So they, and they actually put some special type of, what is it? It was like tie-dye. a dye. Yeah, 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 like tie dye. And they did actually a really good job. I could have bought like half of them. I could have bought them too. Probably all of like, them. Yeah, they're all in my so wardrobe. Well done, guys. That, was, that was really, really cool. Um, my highlight about the camp would just be just really watching our youth, just watching them just expand in unity with each other. Yeah. They're all just a team, like they've all got each other's backs and there's such a great future and such a great purpose that is for them. And it's just it's just so wonderful seeing what God's doing in them. Um, what else did they get up to, Monique? Yeah, well, I just, you know, my highlight would have been just, you know, getting involved in the games, just bonding together. But what was really special, we had a chapel night as well, uh, where we, um, you know, praised and worshipped. And, and co- I mean, we made it a little bit of a competition in, during the praise song to see who could move the most because, you know, nothing like a little healthy competition to get, get everyone dancing because, you know, some of it. But when you, when you put points on the line, then, that, then it gets real, you know, it goes down. It goes down. But it was just really cool because we had this moment of where, you know, we just got to be vulnerable with each other. And I think we've come from a point where let's just learn who each other is to we're now at a point where we feel comfortable to be vulnerable. You know, there were tears, there was laughter, and everyone got to, you know. And when people started to share, we realized that there was like a common thing. And so um, that just was just powerful because, you know, youth were realizing God is speaking to them. You're like, oh, no, this is not from God, but this is what I was thinking about. And we're like, no, but don't dismiss that. That is that is from God. So that would probably be like, I love a good competition, but that would actually probably be my highlight, hands down. So, yeah, um, that was that was awesome. And, yeah, so youth, we had fun, didn't we? Come yes. on, youth. Well done. So, round of applause for Oh, yeah, pray for them. Yes, round of applause Woo! for them. And huge shout out to Sarah for yes. being at the anchor Round of that. Of applause and for Sarah. Give her a hand. Hallelujah. Jace. Yeah, well, Jace as yeah, well. Dylan well and Jace Marina. Well. So it doesn't just, you know, happen. And uh, yeah, but massive ups to the youth. Obviously, it wouldn't happen without you guys. So this term, we got, we're got we ready to start next yeah. week. We're ready for a new year. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Youth's I'm back, guys. Youth is back this, this Friday. This Friday, oh, we've yes. got a new series, Making Disciples. Yes. And I think that was inspired. Ooh. I just got captivated. (laughs) Anyway, um, it's it's inspired by Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we'd love for you guys to be praying that what was sparked at camp would fan into the term and that we'd be encouraged, they would be encouraged to make disciples, to bring friends. You know, we're pretty good at friends, friends being friends, but we can lift that up a level, I reckon. But we need your help, so your prayers would be very much appreciated. Good. So youth is back this Friday, team. Praise party, capture the flag, bring your Bibles, journals, and your own snacks, because we've got to be COVID safe still. But hey, when you bring your own snacks, 
you get to choose your favourites, right? So there's a silver <laughs> lining to everything. That's true. So Even please pray yeah. for us. All right, it's absolutely. Good. We'll be doing. Let's let's pray right now, church. I want you to reach out your hands to these guys and have your uh, have our youth in our hearts. My God, thank you so much. God, this is going to be a year, God, like no other. God, we thank you, Lord, that the development and growth in our young people is going to be significant. God, at the end of this year, we're going to have young people taking greater greater weight in our church, greater sense of responsibility because of the, of the, the, the backing that your spirit has in them. We pray that their ears would be open to your leading. God, we pray that they would have just incredible fun as they follow you and they lead their friends to Christ. My God, bless all of our team. My God, cause them to have energy and capacity to lead and not get distracted by uh, other things, but they would have the, the ability to lead our young people in the ways of God with all their being. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Amen. Awesome. How good is our team? Teamwork makes the dream work. Lashayed, but absolutely true. Very good. Well, hey, jump to your feet, everybody. Jump to your feet online. And we are going to uh, enjoy this next song together before Ben comes and preaches to continue our Hearing From God series. Can't wait for this. You are the one who called for the dead man to rise. You mix the dirt and open the eyes of the blind. Reach for the woman and lifted her out of the dust. You came from heaven to show us the wonder of love. Here in your power, daring to dream. Give us the faith. See you change.
Let's just pray for a moment right now. Just all over this auditorium, online. Let's just take a moment. Let's close our eyes, steady our hearts. If you've got to lift your hands, lift your hands. Do whatever you've got to do right now to just be in a posture of readiness and attentiveness because I just really believe God, God is speaking all the time, you know. And, he, and He's not just talk, talking to the bloke with the microphone. God is speaking to young people. He's speaking to old people. He's speaking to people that don't even call themselves Christians. God's speaking. Let's not miss it. Lord, we just thank you this morning that you are present. And because you are present, you're speaking. You're talking to us. You're helping us to build our lives. You're helping us to build your church. Lord, our, 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 our prayer and our posture here in unison, here in this place and online right now, Lord, is, Lord, speak to us. I'm listening. I'm ready to hear. And we just thank you that this is all possible because, what, because of what you have accomplished. That Jesus, you made a way where there was no way that we could become, we, we could be in relationship with our Father God. And we just thank you for that. We're mindful of that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all said, Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated in the presence of God this morning. You guys are amazing. From, from one musician to another, we, we, we appreciate you guys. We love you. Thank you so much for bringing us into God's presence this morning. You know, God even speaks to drummers. I, I, I love that. <laughs> um, so, I have a problem. And I'm about to let you in. I'm, I'm about to be really vulnerable and just let you know something. And those who know me well enough already know this. I'm sure of it. Um, but I actually can't hear music. I can't hear music. I can only listen to it. I'm getting all these really blanket, vacant, vacant stares right now. What do you mean? Okay, well, this, is, this is a situation. Like, uh, only a few weeks ago in Connect Group, um, Josh loves to bring his Bluetooth speaker along and, uh, and set some vibe. Anyway, so he was, playing, he was playing this piece of, he was playing this playlist or album or whatever, and it was just too good. I, I could not hear a word anyone was saying. Why? Because I can't, I can't, I can't just hear music. I have to listen to it. Part, part of my makeup as a human being, part of the makeup that God has made me is a musician. And so uh, there's something about music that just draws me in. And I can't, I can't hack it. I, I, mean, I, I, I have no control over it. <laughs> if there's music playing, I'm sorry, but I'm not listening to a word you're saying. I, I had to ask Josh to put some music on that was at least 50% worse. Otherwise, I wasn't going to be able to pay attention. I was going to be no good for Connect Group. <laughs> you see, th there really is a big difference between... Oh, I'm just going to take these off. Actually, I'll tell you one more story. So, most, most nights I'm cooking dinner, or at least I'm, I'm, uh, I'm you know, cleaning up after dinner. And uh, I'll be wearing headphones. I'll be like listening to some tunes or a podcast or something why, while I'm doing the work. And, and I find that helpful because um, I find that, like, especially if I'm trying to listen to a piece of music or I'm really trying to focus on a really interesting episode of a podcast or something, I find that just playing it on a speaker 
isn't good enough because I'm hearing all the ambient noise. I'm hearing the, the, the kids argue. <laughs> you know, like, like I, I'm hearing the TV in the background, like all this kind of stuff. I want to have a, a really pure experience. I don't want to just hear the music. I want to listen to it. And, you know, and, you know the number of times, and I'm, normally I'm not wearing these headphones. I'm using my in-ear headphones. So if someone wants to talk to me, they don't even immediately know that I'm listening. I'm not listening to them. Sometimes they're having conversations with me that I'm completely unaware of. And then I turn around and they go, Michelle knows I'm telling the truth. <laughs> but yeah, the, there really is a distinct difference between hearing and listening. You know, you, you think about, you think about um, the wind of an evening. Most of us have, have experienced a windy night in our lives, right? So when we hear the, the wind howling outside, we're not really overthinking it, are we? We just kind of go, oh, it's windy outside. Cool. But, but to, to, to listen is to pay attention. Listening actually costs us something. We actually have to pay attention. If, if we want to take on board the words of, a, of someone in a conversation, we actually have to pay them the respect of actually hearing what they're saying to you and, and, and thoughtfully consider the things that they are saying so that you can meaningfully contribute in response, right? It's not a passive thing. Listening is not passive. Hearing is passive. Hear, you can't turn hearing off. You're always hearing stuff. But, but whether or not you're going to pay attention to the, to the sounds in your world is a decision. Listening is a decision. And so, I'd love for you guys to turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 10. Sorry, boys, I am skipping ahead again. We're, we're only up to Romans 9, for those who are in our connect group. Uh, but in, in chapter 10 of Romans, in verse 14, it says, it says this, But how can they call on Him to save them unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they have not heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone tells them? But how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the Scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. Why? Because listening is a choice. Listening is a choice. For, the, for Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? And then up here in the New King James in verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I've always, I've always found that And hearing by a different microphone. No. Hearing by the Word of God. And I find that confusing, right? Because you don't, you don't hear by someone speaking. You hear by using your ears. And, right? Like, I'm not using, I'm not using my ears to talk to you right now. I... I and you're not using your mouth to hear me, right? You're using your ears to hear me, right? But, but words are things that you say and listen to. Hear by the word of, like, by, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just simple. Maybe you are all, are all way more smart, smart, smarter than me. But I found that confusing. But this is what I've come to realize about what this is saying to us, is that just like... Headphones create a sense of isolation from the outside world and the listening experience. The Word of God can actually become like that. It can become like a filter through which we, we perceive sound. It becomes a filter through which we perceive our world. If we let it, we can let the Word of God become our worldview. 
if we let it, we can, if we're listening, if we are hearing God, we can let the things that God says actually shape our perception and not allow just our perception to be the judge on what is really happening in reality, but we can actually let God be the judge. You know, and this is so important because so many times in, li- in our life, if we have the wrong perception, if we don't understand the character of God, we're going to have a hard time listening to Him. And so we've got to put on the headphones of faith. We've got to put on the headphones of the Word of God so that we're, when, when people are saying hurtful things, we're hearing those words through the filter of God's Word. When someone brings a negative report to us, we're not just hearing the words, but we're hearing God's Word filtering those experiences, those things that are coming against us. And so today we're going on a journey of listening. So there's this, uh, look, I think I've covered all that. I'm just going to skip my own notes. So this is there's this great story in the Old Testament um, of Samuel. Now Samuel is such a cool story, and uh, a little bit of context before we get into the the stuff that I want to pull out. Um, so things aren't going great. The last judge of Israel was Samson. And you, you guys know the story of Samson. He had a few moral issues and it didn't end well for him. And so in the leadership vacuum, um, this man Eli assumed responsibility and became the next judge. His problem was not so much with himself, but his sons. His sons were not living up to the standard that God would need them to as a family, to be the leaders. And so there's turmoil in Eli's house, there was turmoil in Israel, but also parallel to all of this, there was turmoil in this young family. There's a woman who was uh, the wife of a man, her name was Hannah, and she, she was experiencing turmoil because she couldn't have, she couldn't give birth. And so one night, she, she goes to the house of God, and she, she's, she's just pouring her heart out to God. So, like, so much, and I, I imagine it wasn't a pretty sight. She just let it all hang out. So much so, because Eli walked past and was like, uh, are you drunk? She, she was just letting it all out. She was completely abandoned to God. And she was just telling it how she saw it. And she was pleading with God, please give me a child. And God heard her prayer. And he actually kind of... Um, kill two birds with the same stone, so to speak, because Samuel was the, was the answer to the leadership issue, but she was also the answer to this woman's prayer, the end of her turmoil, the end of her disgrace, the end of her shame. And so when Samuel was weaned, Hannah actually came to Eli and said, hey, here is, here is my son. He's going to serve you. He's going to serve God in the house of God all the days of his life. And then every year, Hannah, Hannah would come and visit Samuel and, and, uh, and, and give him like a new set of clothes. And like there was a relationship there still, which to me kind of, it's kind of hard to wrap my head around, you know, because there's no way in the world that, like you see, Samuel just wasn't abandoned, right? He was aware of everything that's going on. So he's having to process this uh, length in relationship with his mom you know he's trying to wrap his head around the call of God on his life like he wasn't like in, and by the time that we get into this story which we're just about to get into he's about 11 right so like he, he's got a bit of a sense of what's going on around him right he's not he's not like a really tiny kid that knows nothing and so one night Samuel's going to bed and it, the place is just dark and quiet and Samuel hears a voice Samuel and he hears his name and so he rushes to Eli and says uh Eli can I help you like you called me 
It's like, I didn't call you, son. Go back to bed. So he goes back to bed. It happens again. He goes back to Eli. Eli's like, I, look, man, I didn't, I didn't call you. Just go back to bed. It happens a third time. This time, Eli's a little bit wiser. This time, Eli's like, you know what? I think this might be God. Go, go back to your room, and the next time it happens, I want you to say, I'm here, your servant is listening. And so he listens, and, and God unpacks this, this plan for actually the end of Eli and his family, which is kind of like, like if you're going to, the first time God speaks to you audibly, like that's kind of a heavy situation to be in. <laughs> like the only father figure that you've ever really known. Yeah, he's, he's not good. <laughs> Because he's like, anyway, the next morning, Samuel's worst nightmare takes place. Eli sees Samuel and is like, uh, so, what did God say? Well, uh, actually, you're dead. God's, God's not happy, you know. But, and, and, and the crazy thing is, too, is that Eli's response was still very soft. Eli's response was like, well, may the Lord still do what he sees to be the right thing to do in this situation. Uh, like, it, it, there's so much nuance in this story. I, I love it. I would encourage you to go and check it out. Samuel uh, chapter 3. Um, but there's a few things that I want to I wanna pull out here. You know, we're all on a, we're all on a journey of listening. Uh, in this I don't know. I don't know whether other generations. I can't speak for other generations. I can only speak for my generation. But it, I don't know whether this is a common problem to this generation. But I, I feel like listening is actually really hard. I, I don't know whether one one day in the distant past listening was actually a, a whole lot easier. Perhaps it was. I I don't know. We. I just feel like we live in a super noisy world. You know, and at the same time, and, and that super noisy world creates noise on the inside of us. You know, and, and I, th- I just think this is, a, this is a challenge. This is actually something that no one is sort of excluded from. I don't want to exclude yourself. I don't want you to exclude yourself from this message. I want you to sort of take this on board and go, you know what? This is a journey. I, I'm here in my journey, and I can go there. I, I'd love for us to kind of go, you know what? Let's embrace this journey of listening to God. Let's embrace on new levels, on fresh levels. Let's expect that God can actually speak to us in new ways this year. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just hear God the same way I heard him when I was 13. That would feel patronizing, I think. You know, but you know what? God God has new things for us. He, he, He has a call for us. Every day he wants to meet us with mercy. Every day he wants to give us a a fresh insight. Every day. Like Revelation isn't just for Sunday. Every morning, God wants to meet you, and He wants to open up the eyes of your understanding. He wants to give you a mission for the day. He wants to give your life purpose, not in just a religious sense, but in a rubber-meets-the-road kind of way. And so God's always speaking to us. Are we always listening? I think it would be unanimous that we've all got room to grow, right? Anyway, so the, the first stage on this journey is hearing. It's, it's this area of perception. Now, Samuel, he heard God speaking to him, but he had, he could perceive that something was going on. He perceived his, his voice being summoned. But that perception wasn't enough. The perception that someone called his name wasn't enough for him to accurately discern what was going on in that moment. Hearing is not enough. Like the stage of hearing, perceiving that something's going on, that God's trying to get your attention. Have you ever felt that? You're just going about your day. You're just doing your thing. And then you just get this feeling. You just get this nudge from the Holy Spirit. You just, there's some, there's, this is the stage of pe- perception, that God is trying to get your attem- attention. He's, try, he's trying to go, hey, you know what? I want to talk to you. I've got, I've got something to say about this. So, so at this point, we, we, are, we are at the the, the fork in the road of, of this dynamic that we were just talking about, about before, are we going to be passive in this moment or are we going to decide to listen? Are we going to go, oh, okay, whatever, or are we going to stop and make 
a decision, you know what, I'm going go to the, I'm gonna progress to the next stage. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go on a journey here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear what God would want to say to me. I'm going to take this thing on board. When, when, you, when you feel the nudge, what are you going to do? Are you going to be passive or are you going to be active in that moment? This, this is the first stage. The second stage is discerning. So, so eventually, eventually, Eli gets the picture that God is actually trying to get a hold of Samuel. So he's able to confirm for Samuel. And, you know, and side note, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, but if I was, I would probably put money on the fact that this is not the first time that God had been speaking to Samuel. I, th- I think growing up in the house of God, you, you, you learn a lot of stuff. You hear a lot of stuff. But sometimes we, we need people on the outside of us to like help in that process of discernment so that we, we know that we're not crazy people. You see, d- d- this area of discernment, I think, I think it derails a lot of people because it's scary. Discernment means vulnerability. Discernment requires a small group of safe people who you're able to say, you know what? This is what I feel like God's saying to me. This is what I'm walking through and this is what I feel like God's saying to me. What's, what's your reaction? What's your response? What's, what's your vibe on this? Because I'm in a season of discernment right now. I need to know what God's trying to say to me. So, so the question is like, do you have that safe group of people? Do you, are you involved in a connect group? That, was, that is what connect group is all about. It's about creating a safe place for people to be vulnerable and, and to share in the word of God together. Not just by like sharing revelation, but like actually sharing our hearts and, and what's actually going on in our world and saying, hey, this is, this is what I'm going through. This is what I think God's trying to say to me. What do you think? Can we pray on this? Can, can you help me discern what God's trying to do here in this moment? Because honestly, I'm a little bit confused. Honestly, I'm a little bit, I don't, I don't know. Can you help me? Welcoming people into your journey. Th- this, is, this is the stage of discernment. You know, and, 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 this is, and this is like, this is so key, you know, because like, this is not to say that we shouldn't be reading our own Bible for ourselves. One of the prime ways that we, we, we get to understand the, the, the character and the culture of God is by being in the scriptures. But then we need confirmation. We need to know that we're not crazy people. The world has enough crazy people in it, right? Let's not be crazy people. Let, let's be people who, who, who are a little bit more well-balanced, but still willing to take the risk, still willing to step out in faith, but we know that we've managed the risk. You guys with me? I've just been informed I have five minutes left, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make tracks. The, the next stage, the next stage in our journey of listening. So what was the first stage? Our first stage was hearing. Our second stage was discern. Our third stage is listening. It's really, it's really simple stuff, hey. <laughs> it's not rocket surgery. Samuel, I, lo- I love this. Eli sends Samuel back to his room and says, next time you hear the voice, I want you to reply, your servant Samuel is here and I'm listening. This is the moment where we pay attention. This is the moment where we, we pay mind to our environment, externally and internally. And we do what is required to set the stage so that God can speak to us clearly. You know, like the, the obvious thing is like, if you're going to read your Bible, turn your TV off. If, if you're addicted to your phone, maybe read the Bible in like paper form. Like there, there are practical things that you can do to set up your, your time with the Lord. There are practical things. But, uh, but I don't want to focus on those things because they're obvious. We need to also pay attention to what's going on in here. Oftentimes, the, the noise around us is actually mirroring the noise on the inside of us. And so when we're part of paying attention is actually quietening down the noise on the inside of us. Like, it's actually really hard to hear from God if we're offended at someone. 
It's actually really hard to hear from God if we perceive that, that God is angry at us. You know, a couple weeks ago, um, in, in Connect Group, we were unpacking Romans 8. It starts with this beautiful statement. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. If, if, you, if the voice you're hearing in your head is condemning you, that is not God. That is not the voice of the Lord. It's something else. And it's not okay. You're never going to hear God if, the, if the, narrative, the, the narrative thread in your psyche is that God is angry at you. Jesus dealt with the anger of God in one, felt, in one, in one move. He, he canceled our debt and made a way so that we can call dad, not just father, but daddy. That we can, that we can be intimate, that we can, we can walk into his presence and, and that we can be forgiven. Isn't that amazing? I mean, for those of us who have been walking with the Lord for a long time, sometimes we're kind of numb to hear that word that we are forgiven, that grace has been extended to us, but we, we can't allow ourselves to get like numb about that. Like this is the crux of the gospel. This is, this is, this is the thread that our whole life is tied to. We are forgiven. God has given grace to us. He's not counting our, mis- our mistakes against us. And so when we come to God, we've got to come to Him with, with the understanding of His character, that, that He is a good God, that He loves us, that He's not, the moment that we come into His presence, He's not going to smack us. He's not going to punish us. No, He wants to take that baggage off your heart. He wants to set you free. But also, if that, if, that is, if that experience is true for us, how much more do we need to expe- extend grace to one another in God's presence? We can't come into God's presence and, and be holding a grudge against someone. We can't be coming into God's presence and holding a fence. We're not going to hear from God that way. And so when we come to God, we need to pay attention. And that means that we have to clean, we have to clean our hearts out a little bit. Sometimes we need to invite God into that process of cleaning our hearts out a little bit. Sometimes, like, God, God's a really good communicator, you know, so follow his lead on that. Sometimes, sometimes he will say, you know what, I've got something to say to you, but we've got to deal with this first. How about we just go on that journey? I want to encourage you to go on that journey. But my final, my final, this, my final point, and this is like the big thing, the final step in the journey of listening is response. I mean, what a way for Samuel to launch his ministry, really. Like, that must have been really hard for an 11-year-old to do, to tell the only father figure in his life, you know what, God's disowned you for a moment. That, that would have been a heavy burden. That would have been a really hard conversation. But, but the, in that moment, I think, Samuel could sense something of his calling. He could sense that God was with him. He, ha- he had faith on the inside of him. And he did what both Eli and God were asking him to do in that moment, which was to share what God had said. So after you've progressed through hearing and discerning and listening, how are you going to respond? You're, you're faced with another decision. Am I actually going to step out Am I going to recognize the deposit of faith that came to me when I really felt like, you know what, this is God? Am I going to take that step? Or am I going to let other voices rule in my life? You see, like when God speaks to us, you can't unhear it. The story of Jonah is all about that. You can't, once God has spoken to you, you can't, once you've heard, you can't unhear God will always try and find a way of bringing you back. He'll even send a big fish to come and get you. So yeah, I mean, if if you're hearing from God and you're ignoring Him, don't go to the beach. It's a bad idea. 
But seriously, God in His grace. And, and I've experienced these moments in my life where I have ignored God. And, you know, the next season later, I find myself in the same position. And He's like, you know what? Are you ready to hear me now? Are you ready to listen? Are you ready to take action? Are you ready to take that step? Let, let, let's get off the carousel this year, if that's you this, today. If you've heard from God and you haven't taken that step yet, how about you get off that carousel today? How about you make a decision? You know what? I'm going to go where the, the voice of faith is calling me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what God has said that I should be doing. I'm going to take that step. It might be scary, yes, but it's better than being bored. It's better than being on the same merry-go-round of life. Faith will take you off of the merry-go-round and into the journey, into the adventure. So when God speaks to us, we actually have a duty of care to the Word of God. We actually have a duty of care. In the same way that if we, if we are going about our business, you know, either at work or like we, we might be on the highway and some accident occurs, we have a duty of care to those people. In the same way, when God speaks to us, when He gets through to us, you know what? We have a duty of care in that moment. So right to, you know, today as we're, we're closing, I, I just want to ask you, you know, where are you? Where are you on this journey? Are you starting out, you know, are you in this zone of hearing? Are you, are you perceiving that God's trying to get your attention today? Well, I want to encourage you, embrace that. Go to the next step. Go, go to the, the, the discerning phase. Go and, go, and, go and talk to someone. Go and talk to someone who's in your safe place. And say, you know what, this is what I feel like God's trying to, what do you think? Let's, let's talk about this. Let's pray. Let's, let's do this together. All right? If, if you've already done that, I want to encourage you. Clear out your heart again. Make room for the Holy Spirit. Make it easy for God to speak to you. Deal with offense. Deal with the things that might want to be trying to clutter your heart. So God can speak and you can hear clearly. If you're at that stage, guess what? It's time to launch. It's time to, it's time to step out in faith. It's time to make a move. It's time to enter the adventure. It's time to get it done. It's time for a miracle to take place. It's time for something to happen. Are you hungry for that today? Lord, I just thank you so much for this incredible group of people here this morning. And I just thank you that, I just thank you that you're, you are speaking to us in your grace. That you love us, you want the best for us. And you're not playing hide and seek. You're playing seek and you will find. And you're ready and willing to open up our hearts, to hear your voice and to give our lives meaning and direction. Lord, right now, our prayer together as your church, Lord, is to open up our hearts and our our. Our prayer echoes that of Samuel. We are your servant and we are listening. At the dawn of this new year, Lord, I pray that you would just speak to every single one of us, that you would lead us on an adventure, that you would lead us into the journey, that you would lead us into the call, that you would lead us into the purpose that you have for each one of us. But not just each one of us, but us as a church. Lord, as a church, as, as a group of your as, a, as your body, as your people. God, I pray that you would lead us. You would help us to discern. God, you would help us to take the next step. God, you'd help, you'd help us to dream big. You'd help us to take the step of faith. God, you'd help us to believe. You'd help us to take the Word of God seriously and move into our future. God, we just thank you so much for what you're going to do here in 2021. And all God's people said, finally, You might be here in this room or you might be here online and you're at the hearing phase right now. Your, 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 your perception is starting to come. You're starting to get spider, spider senses. You're starting to get tingles. You're starting to get a bit of a nudge from the Holy Spirit. You might not be able to put that language to that, but you can, you can feel this sense that maybe God's trying to get a hold of you right now. I want to encourage you. You know what? Don't ignore that. The best decision I ever made was to say, just to make a simple prayer. You know what? I, there was a day as a kid and I, I could feel that nudge. I felt like God was real 
And I felt like he, he had a purpose for my life. I feel like he, he wanted my attention. And so I made a decision in that moment. You know what? I'm going to let Jesus into my life. And I prayed a simple prayer and Jesus came into my life. And life has not been easy, but God has been with me. And life with Him is hard. I can't imagine what your life has been like without Him. But I, am, I can say this with total conviction that God, you need God. You need Him. You need Him to wipe away, you wipe the slate clean. You need Him, you need His forgiveness. You need His love. I don't know how you would do life without any of those things. But today, if, if you're willing to take that step, to take that nudge seriously, you can welcome Him into your life and He can transform your life. He can, he can cleanse your heart. He can forgive you. He can deal with the shame. He can deal with the hurt. He can turn your life upside down and take you on a journey and an adventure into your life's purpose and calling. And if that's you today, I just want to encourage you. You know what? Put your hand up and say, yeah, and, and that's me. And I would love to pray with you right now. If, if that's you online, I just, want you to make, I just want you to make a comment or say, yeah, click that pray with me button. Send us an email at c3rubina.org.au and, and we, will, we will get in touch and we will pray with you and we will in, encourage you in your journey of faith. But right now, if, if that's you, I'd love for you just to make it clear, just put your hand up and say, yes, I wanna, I wanna enter into this journey of faith this morning. I wanna follow God. I wanna know Him. I wanna follow Him. I want what He has for me. If that's you this morning, give me a wave. Lord, right now, I just thank you for everyone listening to you here in this moment. Lord, I pray that you would lead them on an incredible journey of faith and purpose and meaning and calling. You know, oftentimes, um, God wants God when God speaks, He's actually disrupting us a little bit, and maybe that sometimes that's the thing that makes listening to God so hard. But I, I feel like God just wants to disrupt us a little bit right now. So I'd love for us all to be upstanding right now, and we're just going to pray. And I, I, I just I just want us to pray that this year in 2021 would be a year where many people would come to know Jesus. That many people would be praying the prayer, Jesus, come into my life. And they would be entering into journey with Him. Can we, can we, can we do that, church? Just in our own words, with our own faith, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to everybody online, if you're with us right now, come on, let's just, let's just cry out to God. I just feel like He wants us to cry out to Him. I just feel like He wants us to ask for God's help in this area. Oh God, Lord, it is our desire that Your house would flourish. It is our desire that, that, that what we know, our friends and our family members and our colleagues at work and, and, our, and our fellow students at, at school and at, at uni, God, we want them to know what we know. We want them to experience the love that we have experienced. Lord, help us to be your messengers. Help us to deliver the words that you are giving to us for our friends. God, help us to be bold people of faith. Help us to be willing to take steps to, to welcome people into your kingdom. Help us, to be, help us to be disruptable. Help us to hear your voice when you're clearly saying, you know what, you should invite that person to church. Hey, you know what? You should catch up with that person and, 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 and have a pray sesh with that person. God, help us, help us in this area. Lord, let this be a, an incredible year of souls saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody said? Everybody said? Amen. 
So good. Big round of applause for Ben. It was, I love that concept of paying attention. We've only got a certain amount of attention that we can pay in a day. Let's give the first to God. Give, a, give to the Lord your first fruits of all your wealth. We have a wealth of attention. Let's not just flippantly give it away. Let's, let's pay God the best attention. We're going to see incredible things happen this year as we do that, aren't we? I'm looking forward to unpacking that thought in our group more because you've set up our discussion for next week. That's amazing. Thank you. That's good. Well, hey, be blessed, everybody. Be blessed online. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, do let us know if you've got prayer requests or things we can be believing with you on. And uh, join the community. Get to know us. So email us at hello at c3rabina.org.au. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. Say hi if you're in the chat. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.